Now let us take a look at the different functions on the Model 6300. To enter the function menu, you will push this button. That will give you nine different uh, functions. The first one is the view limit. When you click on that, that will allow you to see whatever hard limits are set for the tester right now. As you can see, max knot is set at 500 knots, so the tester will not be able to go above 500 knots. Minimum knots is set at minus 50, so the tester will not be able to go below minus 50 knots. Max knot per minute is set at 500 knots, so that's the maximum rate you'll be able to achieve on the PT channel. Max mat is set at one. Max feet is set at 55,000 feet, so the tester will not be able to go above 55,000 feet. Minimum feet set at minus 2,000, so same, it won't be able to go below minus 2,000. And the max rate set at 6,000 feet per minute, the tester will not be able to go um, above uh, 6,000 feet per minute or minus 6,000 feet per minute. Now, if you're working on different airframes and you need to change that, you will click cancel here, push function, go to modify limits, enter the password that you can find in the user manual if it is available to you. And from there, you'll be able to modify the limits for your test set. Note that there are some hard limits that are wired into this test set, so you will never be able to go above certain limits. For example, if I want to change my max altitude, here max feet, I will push number five, and I will be given the choice to enter a value between 5,000 and 100,000. Here, for example, if I push number one to change my maximum airspeed, I will be given the choice between 100 and 690 knots. If I want to change that, 690, I put 690, enter, and now this is my new hard limit. Note that when I'm trying to enter a value that is higher than 690 knots, I will get an error message that I will show you right now. Here, I push on the blue box for PT, enter 700, which is above the limit, click enter, and I will get an error message saying PITO target exceeds limit. Press clear and enter a new value as long as it is within the range that was decided in the modify limit, I will be able to enter that value. Coming back in the modify limits function menu, I have minimum not set at minus 50 here. That is a good value. I would not recommend putting zero or even minus five or 10, because if you set your airspeed at zero here, you might have a small variability. And if it goes below the zero knots uh, limit, uh, the tester will stop telling you that the limit has been um, passed. So leave it at a small negative value. Uh, minus 50 is usually good for most aircraft. If you have a very sensitive analog uh, instrument, you can set it at minus 20, minus 10 maybe, but try not to do it at zero. Okay, if I go back in the functions, here is brightness. Uh, that is to select the brightness on the wired remote. Function four is going to be run profile. So that's an interesting one. On the Model 6300, you can run uh, different profiles. You can load up to 15 profiles. Each profile can have up to 50 steps. And so uh, by loading profile, you automate the process of your AMM procedure. Um, the way to launch that is by pushing the profile number first. So let's say profile 15, uh, then putting a dot and then putting the step number. So you can start at step number one. You can start at step number 20 if you want, 30, 32, 47. You can start at any step you want. If you need to restart uh, a check that you have left um, because you had another emergency, you can start it at a later step. Then I click enter. And I will launch um, the profile 15, step number one. It will give me the name of that profile, so I make sure that whatever I'm uh, entering is right. And then it will start populating the four target boxes here for the rates and for the actual values. And as usual, it's blinking, so it's gonna wait for me to confirm. As soon as I click on go, the test set will actually get to the desired target. As soon as I reach the target, it's gonna be a little bit longer. What I can do is you use the up and down arrows to navigate between the steps in my profiles. So in the profile 15, I wanna to go to step number two, so it's gonna be 15.2. I just have to use the up arrow and that will send me to step number two. As you can see, the rates are the same and the target values have changed. 
This is actually a short version of the FAR 91.411 check. And when I'm ready, I click on go. So you get the idea. You can keep moving up step by step by just pushing the up arrow and then clicking go. All you have to do is wait for the test set to reach the target that you've set and then push up arrow and go. So it really simplifies the test, avoids like having to push buttons and generate potential errors. Function five is going to allow the test set to receive profiles whenever you're downloading them in the box. That is described in a separate training video. When you click on this, you will now set the box in receiving mode for downloading profiles. When you're done, you click on go. Let's now take a look at function six, height correction. So height correction is useful when you have a large aircraft that you're testing and the difference of uh, clearance between your test set and the air data computer that you're testing, uh, typically at the level of the pitot probe, is pretty high. If you want to compensate for that altitude, uh, what you'll do is just input a value here in feet and that will make your test set believe that it is so many feet higher uh, to compensate for a tester that is below the aircraft or so many feet lower uh, to compensate for a tester that is above the aircraft itself, typically on scaffoldings. So to do that, we're gonna input 10 feet and believe that you know the tester is about 10 feet uh, below the aircraft. So we'll push 10 here, press enter. And as you can see, 10 feet are being included additionally to the PS channel. To confirm, I can click on go. Or to cancel, I can click on cancel. I click on go to confirm. Every time you restart the box, the attitude height correction will be set back to zero. So you don't have to worry about checking that every single time. Going back into functions, we can now take a look at the leak timers. Leak timers, as we saw earlier during the leak check, will allow you to change the different timers depending on your AMM procedure or your work hard. So this is a setup for the Airbus aircraft, usually one minute and then five minutes and 10 minutes for the uh, Pito leak. Of course, you can set change it to whatever you want. So for example, if I wanna change my leak timer number two, I push on two here and set two minutes. This is a good way of doing the leak check as well. If your AMM is asking you to uh, wait for one minute before starting a one minute leak check, you can start the leak check uh, immediately, wait for one minute, do not record that value, and then wait for the second minute and record the value that you'll find on the second minute. When you're done, you can cancel out. Function eight is going to be for the calibration part. This is for us to calibrate the unit or for your company's calibration laboratory, if it has one. So we'll not be looking at that today. And finally, uh, function nine is the encoder. This is an option. If you do have that option, you can click on encoder here. What it will do is uh, whenever the encoder is connected to the unit, it will read the gray code and make sure that the gray code matches with the flight level at which you are. So you can enter different altitude here uh, by pressing uh, six. You enter your target altitude, for example, 5,000 feet, and it will get to 5,000 feet immediately. And you'll be able to read the gray code as it shows up on the encoder. So this is just a quick way to uh, make sure that your encoder is working properly and sending the right altitude values to your transponder. You can also change the rates here by clicking 7.5.